welcome. Um, I think we I need to make a start because we have a lot to get through this morning. Um, my name is Nechna and I work on the Open, um, Open Air Project. Just a couple of um, housekeeping. We have a coffee break at 10.30. This will be here in this building. Lunch will be in another building on the sixth floor, I've been informed. So, and we don't have, we only have 50 minutes for lunch. So if you could get speedily out of this building, into, into the other building, up to the sixth floor, have your lunch and come down again. But um, you can, maybe you have a chance to enjoy the nice fresh air in Vilnius this morning. This event is actually being live streamed today, and there is a link going around via Twitter. Thank you. Um, so, welcome everybody <laughs> who's watching from afar. Um, so, this is one of our. This is actually our fourth <laughs> workshop. Open Air in, in the Open Air Plus project has had four workshops, and this is our last, um, and perhaps a very interesting workshop. Uh, the point of all these workshops is to get a better understanding of open access, open science, um, research data, management, interoperability, infrastructures, all kinds of topics, um, including research data management. Um, it was the last one. And now we're meeting in Vilnius to discuss two studies that the project has undertaken, sustainability and legal studies. So in this room we have the experts who are working on the studies. So we're going to hear about them today and gather your input onto these studies. For those of you in the room, I think a lot of you know what open air is, so I'm not going to give a presentation about open air, but just to tell you that we, uh, we call ourselves a publication infrastructure. That means we're funded by the EC to gather all the um, output in open access of seven thematic areas in the FP7 funding stream. All have to be deposited in open access. So in a way, we're an instrument to support the policy of open access for the European Commission. Um, we're a very large project. We have many different partners, and we're spread all over Europe. And we have a, um, every European country represented in the project. Uh, we're also moving gradually to, to represent funding information for other European funders um, and uh, funding details at national level. And we rely heavily on repositories and data sources that come into, into us that we harvest, so open access repositories. Um, and now the, the, the key thing about Open Air is that we're linking from publications to project information. And in a way, this is very important because this can give the European Commission an idea of funding, of, of, of impact in various funding streams and um, within various disciplines. So they can know how many publications come out of various projects and in open access. So that's a very important instrument for the European Commission. And what we want to do is to apply that model to other national funding streams. Um, we're also linking to research data underneath, lying, under, underlying the publication. So that's been an area, an area of, of focus and activity in Open Air Plus. And this is a sort of an idea that the research um, question can be wider than just the publication. It can also be about the underlying data and the project information. So we want to give a, a wider context to, to the research environment. Um, so we're linking to data and... This is really um, where the, the context of the first study, the legal and licensing issue, comes into. Because when we link to data, we know very little about the data, um, the copyright and the Database Protection Act that we're linking to. So this is what you're going to hear from the legal team today. It's what's in it for us as an infrastructure. What um, difficulties might we encounter in having data centers as our, and data repositories as our data providers? Are we in infringing any legal aspects? And so this is really what the study set out to, to look into. And it looked into six different countries. I think it examined database protection um, act in six different countries and did a very thorough investigation of activities in those countries. Um, and also, um, it had um, an application because it had many case studies, which will also be presented today, which <coughs> might be applicable for you in the audience. So. We look forward to hearing about that. Um, then in the afternoon, we're going to look at sustainability. We have here members of the sustainability team in the audience who are looking at how to sustain these infrastructures 
we are a project, we'd like to move into a permanent infrastructure environment, but we need to understand things like who are our stakeholders, what are the services we're going to provide. All these things have to be investigated. We carried out a study in open air um, within the project, which set the ground, the framework for that, and now we're taking it further to investigate it more deeply. So you'll hear from the team in the afternoon. And I think the point of this, this whole... Um, day is that we would like to have an interactive session, we'd like to have your input on this and your questions and your comments. I think the teams would appreciate that very much at, at this stage of, the, of their studies. So please participate. Um, what I'd like to announce is we have our final, well, our, our annual <laughs> open air conference next year in Athens um, uh, in May, and we now set the date for that. And this will be at the Acropolis Museum, which is a fantastic location. And now the slideshow's got gone on, but anyway, back to Athens. Please put that in your diary, and it'll be an exciting two-day event in a very good location, and that'll explore the future of open access. So, there's, uh, Natalie has just walked in from Athens, so yeah, we'd like to see you all from all come to that. And last but not least, I would like very much to thank our colleagues, both here at the university and at Kaunas University, which is some, um, I don't know how many kilometres <laughs> away from here, but um, Jintari especially, and her team have done a lot of work preparing this event and organising the location for us. So thank you very much to them. Um, thank you very much for all of you coming here. And I think I would like to start now the session. So I'm going to introduce, first of all, Professor Weber, who we're very lucky to have with us. He was um, very much involved in authoring this study. He is the Chair of Intellectual Property Law at the University of Go Göttingen, Chair of uh, Intellectual Property Law, Media and ICT Law, and his specialism is in electronic contracting. Um, he spent a time in Vienna at the University of Economics, and he also, was also had his professorship at Stanford Law School, and he just told me that it was too sunny there, so he returned to Germany, <laughs> back to Göttingen. So, um, Professor Weber, I'd like to introduce you, and he's also going to give us the whole picture of the study, introduce the study, and focus on the forms of protection in the study. So what, what sort of database right, copyright, and, and maybe explain to us what the sui generis <laughs> right actually <laughs> means. So thank you very much, Professor, over to yep. you.